Okay, welcome to The Crow Show. Um, this is going to be my third and last movie on The Sun because so many people have asked me questions. Um, I am still funding The Crow Discovery Project. This clip is not related to that, but I will be back on track with my normal clips after this clip. Now, I want you to pay attention to the things I'm going to point out because you need to know it to understand what's being encoded in these movies. Now, this is an image from 1534 that shows, as above, so below, the zodiacal signs that the sun travels through are related to parts of your body. Notice that I have the feet, which correspond with Pisces, the fish, and your sexual organs to uh, Scorpio. You need to know those two things and remember those two things to understand some of the encoding in this movie that I'm going to point out. Now, this movie I picked out because I mentioned that the word angels was used to confuse angles of sunlight from the sun, and a lot of people ask questions about that. So that's why I'm doing this. The movie that I'm going to break down is called Michael. It was made in 1996, and John Travolta was the archangel Michael. Um, he's actually not an angel. He's the sun, and in this movie, it takes place over a few days, but in reality, there's an inner encoded line that shows Michael, who is actually the sun, traveling through the zodiac for the full course of a year. And I'm going to break that down and show it to you. Okay, to get started, um, what you're looking at here is going to be the zodiac. It's just going to be square instead of round. Top center, bottom center, those are the solstices. Left and right center are the equinoxes, and we're going to go counterclockwise around. Now, when the movie Michael starts, a title comes up, and there's his name, and it sets like the sun. It goes down, and uh, it looks like this font. This is the first clue that you get. Um, for those who pay attention to movies and understand what they're about. When it rises again, it glows really intensely like this to look like the sun. Now, a group of people are going to set out to go see this angel, Michael, and uh, here they are in uh, Chicago, and I'm going to put up it's Christmas time, so there's the two signs, um, Capricorn and Sagittarius. That's where we're going to start. Now, the story that they go on to go find the angel for their newspaper takes a few days. Um, the story that I'm going to tell you that's encoded in here takes a year. The sun travels for a year through the encoded storyline. There's the Christmas tree going up. So as we go through the zodiacal signs, I will place them up counterclockwise and we'll step through each one and I'll prove to you that this is going on. Okay, so the first sign that we're going to come into here, and bear with me, you will see as we go on that this is not hippy-dippy. Um, we're going into the sign of Aquarius, and in Michael's town, there's a storm raging, and that is what Aquarius symbolizes. He is the water bearer, the wet season. When the sun is in Aquarius each year, the rains come, and here are the devices that symbolize what the water bearer holds in his hand in the zodiacal illustration of the water bearer. Now, at first glance, you're probably going to be thinking, yeah, right, but just bear with me and I will show you that each and every sign of the zodiac is encoded here. Now, this one's a little obscure, but bear with me. Here we go. Okay, so here is the few first view we get of the Archangel Michael. He's sleeping. He sleeps standing up. He never lays down. And you see his feet. And if you remember what I showed you from the earlier zodiacal representation, the feet represent Pisces. So here we are moving forward into the sign of Pisces. Now the reason he's sleeping is because the sun in Pisces is not above the equator yet. The next sign, Aries, the sun will come above the equator and that will be spring when the sun is in, Ar in Aries and he will begin to come alive and do things and he will be a young sun and I will demonstrate that. Okay, so here comes the guys from the newspaper to meet the angel for the first time, and they pull into the Milk Bottle Motel where Michael is at, where they're going to pick him up. And clearly the Milk Bottle symbolizes an infant um, youngness, and uh, here it symbolizes the brand new sun. We're going to enter the sign of Aries, and that means that the sun will be coming above the equator. And uh, in science, or scientific astrology, uh, it's referred to as a young sun or a new sun. So here's the first introduction to the archangel Michael, who is actually the sun. Um, he's wearing overalls, 
because the sun is over all of us and because he has just come over the equator in the sign of Aries. This is why holidays or holy days such as Passover are named the way they are because the sun has passed over the equator. Now, in this scene, uh, the lady there, who is also a supernatural being, uh, is preparing to die, and Michael is going to replace her. She's making eggs, a sign of fertility, for everybody at the table. And um, as this moves on through the scene, she makes eggs and she dies here, and they end up at this funeral. There's another reference to Aries here when they say, the Lord is our shepherd prayer, because shepherds are shepherding sheep and Aries is a ram hence a sheep and it is often encoded as sheep in that way so they're gonna set out on their journey here in a minute and then the uh, the symbolism really gets a bit more obvious and I should also mention that Michael was acting very childlike um, in the last scene so they set off and Michael wants to see the largest ball of twine in the world and of course, if you knock the E off the word twine, you have twin, hence the sign of Gemini. As the next two signs are Gemini and Taurus, you know that we should be seeing a bull somewhere and some reference to twins. Well, the giant ball of twine is pretty obvious. You simply see the sign, knock the E off the word twine, and you have your twin. And here's the giant ball of twine now. Um, they jumped ahead one sign, and they do this throughout the movie. Um, they reverse two signs at a time. Now, as he's there looking at the twine, what does he notice over in the field? But a bull. And so there is the sign of Taurus. And, of course, he does battle with the bull, and um, that represents the sun in, in the sign of Taurus. And um, here is a shot of Michael and the bull facing off in the sign of Taurus. So, of course, now the sun has to go into the sign of Cancer uh, at the summer solstice when the sun is at the top of its power, and here is Michael doing a crab dance. Um, he dances with two ladies, and the whole thing looks like a multi-legged creature here. They are all together lined up. Michael has his arms in the air like a crab, and there's no mistaking the uh, peculiarity of this dance. It's very crab-like. Here he is holding his arms up while the girls hold their arms down. And of course, the sun being at the height of its power, a fight ensues. And the archangel, who is actually the sun, begins to fight with all the men in the bar. And uh, here he is in all his glory at the summer solstice, height of his power. Now in the middle of this fight, he picks up a chair and becomes the lion tamer. And there we have the sign of Leo, Leo the lion. So the sun has passed the height of its power, the summer solstice. He is now just beginning to descend. He's in the sign of Leo, and there he is taming lions with his chair. Uh, very unmistakable. But as in all allegory where the hero falls, he ends up in jail for having been in a fight. It's because now the sun has to decline. It has come by the winter solstice, and it has no other choice but to descend towards winter. And winter is always allegoried by the use of the word hell, fire and ice. It's actually winter, but it's allegory for hell. So we will carry on past this jail into the sign of Libra. Okay, so now we come into the sign of Libra, which is symbolized by Michael going to court after he leaves jail. Um, Court is always symbolized by the scales. Everyone's seen blindfolded justice holding the scales of justice. This has always been derived from the sign of Libra. Uh, here, Michael is going into the judge's chambers. The sun is going into Libra, firmly into Libra, and be getting ready to pass the fall equinox and begin to decline into winter. So they leave court and Michael wants to go see the largest frying pan in the world, further symbolizing the descent into hell past the equinox. When they refuse to stop, he does a countdown saying 10 hippopotamus, 9, and so forth. Hippo is the Greek word for horse, and he flattens the tire, which is symbolized by the piercing of Sagittarius's arrow into the tire, stopping the car, at which point he can get out and go see the world's largest frying pan. Now, to confirm that we are talking an allegory now that we've passed the equinox, we're going into hell. While he's at the world's largest non-stick frying pan, he tells the tale of how he vanquishes Satan, or Beelzebub, to two old guys sitting there. 
which solidly confirms that he has passed the equinox and he is descending into hell. Meanwhile, we're wondering, where's the virgin? Well, she shows up in a tow truck. She is a newlywed dressed in white, and there is the virgin symbolism that we have been waiting for. And again, in this movie, so that it's not so obvious, they flip the signs around so they're not in identical order, so that it's not so easy for people to figure out what they're being presented with. Now that we've seen the sign of Virgo the Virgin, it's time for Scorpio, which if you remember corresponds to the sexual organs. Everyone eats pie in the restaurant and then that night has sex. Uh, there are two couples that go have sex, which symbolizes Scorpio. Now in the morning, they wake up, they go out, and the dog Sparky that is with them manages to run out in the road and get hit by a Mack truck and killed. Now this whole time, people have been asking the Archangel, what kind of angel are you? Do you do this? Do you do that? And he always says that's not his area. Well, when they demand that he brings Sparky the dog back to life, he claims that is not his area as he has the entire movie. But lo and behold, Michael, the son, does bring Sparky back to life. And this encodes a few things. For those of us who do not believe that the sun is a nuclear furnace, but an electrical body up there, Sparky's name kind of confirms that. Secondary, secondarily, the name Helios for the sun is the root for the word healing. And as I claimed in my past clips with uh, Orion and the sun, rebirth and death are associated with this. So after the dog comes back to life, they jump in the car and they're on their way again, and this time they cross the symbolic bridge, further taking them into hell, past the equinox where the sun must go down to the winter solstice to die. Okay, so in the following scene, uh, Michael is getting sick in the back of the car. His feathers are falling off, and sure enough, he's headed for the winter solstice, where the sun will in fact die. It will stand still for three days and then begin to ascend towards the spring equinox again. And after seeing the largest building in the world at the time, the Sears Tower, Michael dies there in the sacred geometry, which is laid out in... You could say a million things about the way this is laid out. Um, notice the absence of one of the walkways in. Uh, if you were to look at this as a zodiacal wheel with Capricorn at the top. Anyhow, we should bear in mind that in the ancient texts, Capricorn is noted as the gateway of the gods, where Michael dies with his head in that direction. And Cancer is known as the gateway of men. And this has to do with death and what happens after we die. Now in closing, there's a scene after Michael is dead where one of the main characters is making three pyramids out of sugar cubes. And again, we're all probably pretty familiar with the pyramids and the all-seeing eye in movies by now. Um, they further hammer this home uh, by taking another shot of this main character who made the pyramids uh, with his head blocking a sign so it says river, implying the Nile. And I will point out, so many people get confused and think that the information that's being displayed here is evil. The information is not evil. It's like any other information on the planet. It's how you use it. Um, if you had information to make anything and you misuse it, then yeah, it's bad. But this information is the birthright of everybody. It's about the sun. It's about other things. Um, everybody should be allowed to know this, not just the ruling class. And believe me, when you see this encoded into movies, you have to know that people are aware of things that you are not aware of. Um, it should spur you on to want to go out and uh, understand what it is that you have not been taught. And again, I cannot stress, I hear so many people saying, oh, there's a pyramid, it's evil. There's the eye, it's evil. It is not evil information. It's your birthright. It's simply how the information is used. If you use powerful information in a bad way, then yes, it's evil. But if you use powerful information in a positive way, it is not. I can't stress that enough. Anyhow, hope this clip wasn't too slow and I'll be doing clips uh, of the type that you are used to from me. Um, there it is. Uh, angels 
angles, the sun, and the encoding of the path of the sun in so many movies I can't even count them all. Cheers.